history and techniques of histology. Have you ever felt like you're standing on the edge of a great unknown, a world that is just out of reach? Well, scientists have been feeling that way for centuries, particularly when it comes to understanding the intricacies of the human body. For years, they struggled to see beyond the resolution limit of the human eye, until the invention of glass lenses changed everything. Between 1500 and 1600, glass was used to make grand church windows. Scientists believed that glass was the key to unlocking a hidden world that had been tantalizingly out of reach, and therefore the quest for ways to make glass more accessible and cheaper began. With the invention of the microscope, scientists could finally see the microscopic world with their own eyes, but everything appeared colorless and incomprehensible. All the details of the human body were right there, but they were unable to understand them. However, these scientific explorers were not about to give up that easily. They set out on a quest to develop histological techniques that would allow them to peer even deeper into the cellular structure of the human body. And their quest was successful. They were able to unravel the mysteries of the human body in ways that would have been unimaginable just a few short centuries ago. The ingenuity of the early scientists paved the way for us to unlock some of the greatest secrets of the human body. Now what is histology? Histology, or microscopic anatomy, is the study of cells, tissues and organs under a microscope. A detailed study of a cell's normal structure and function helps us to understand how they work together to participate in complex organ systems. To be a part of a debate club, you cannot just know one side of the story. To debate about what you think is right, you also have to have a thorough understanding of what you think is wrong. And this is exactly what histopathology is. The study of the diseased cell under the microscope while comparing its structure and function to the normal cell. Histopathology has proven to be an invaluable tool in the fight against disease. It allows us to diagnose diseases quickly and accurately, develop better treatments and improve patient outcomes, deepen our understanding of the mechanisms of disease and their underlying causes. Now here's a little information about our main tool, the microscope. There are different types of microscope, the most common one in classrooms being the light microscope, which uses glass lenses to study the architecture of cells. While the internal feature of the cell may be invisible to the naked eye, a microscope can magnify it to about 1500 times. And this is what we call resolution. When you enter your histology lab, chances are that ready-made beautiful slides are handed to you. All you are expected to do is view them under a microscope and identify key features of the tissue. But have you wondered what goes on behind the scene? How does a piece of body tissue even end up on that slide? Here are the steps involved in slide preparation. The first step is the fixation of the tissue. Immediately after the tissue is collected, the next natural step is autolysis where the cell begins to self-destruct. To prevent this, the tissue has to be treated with a chemical called a fixing agent or fixative, like formalin. It also helps in preserving cells and tissues for longer periods. The tissues are stored in the fixative for a few hours. The next step is called embedding, which is the process of inserting the fixed tissue into a paraffin wax bed. The wax hardens around the tissue to form a block. Now that the tissue is safe within a block of wax, it is easier to section it into thin slices using a technique called sectioning. The sectioned tissue is then mounted on a slide ready to be stained. In some cases, embedding in a bed of wax may not even be required. Surgeons can cut off a piece of tissue from the patient's body, freeze it, slice it, and directly observe the tissue under a microscope. This helps get a quicker diagnosis, but isn't practical for the storage of the tissue. The next step involved is staining. Is a crucial step to differentiate cell components. If you skip this step, 
all cell components will look transparent and colorless under the microscope, making it harder to tell them apart. Hematoxylin and eosin are the popular stains used in our labs. All right, stop for a moment to answer this question. Hematoxylin stain is readily accepted by the hero of the cell. Which of these cell components are we referring to? 1. Cell membrane 2. Fat 3. Nucleus 4. Proteins Hematoxylin stain readily binds to the nuclear components, making it easier to visualize and study. As a helpful mnemonic, we can remember that H is for both hematoxylin and the hero of the cell, the nucleus. So if you correctly identify the nucleus as the component being referred to in our question, congratulations, you got it right. Let's now get back to the staining process. First, the tissue is subjected to the hematoxylin stain, which is immediately accepted by the nucleus of the cells, turning them dark blue or purple. Excess hematoxylin is washed off under running tap water and then the slide is counterstained with the eosin solution. All other structures within the cell take up the eosin stain to look like varying shades of lilac colour. A thin cover slip is put on the stained tissue to prevent damage. Now that you have a ready slide, let us stick it under a light microscope. You will see a splash of pink and blue representing a group of cells huddled close together. Let us take one of those cells and study its basic structure in the next session. We hope you had fun learning with us.